What's up YouTube? Leo here with Kill Mode RC. I just wanted to give you guys a quick, uh, hopefully quick, uh, rundown of some of the R&D I've been doing recently on the uh, Kill Mode cat packs. Um, so I took out the Kill Mode Typhon yesterday uh, to do some quick tests. I did a couple 4S passes, a couple 6S passes. I actually took out the prototype 6 pack and put in one of the finished four packs so the ones that i'm currently shipping right now are the three packs and the four packs the six packs will be ready hopefully in the next week or two um so i wanted to show these uh, a lot of the guys have been asking me for some data logs a little proof uh, in the pudding um and uh, just asking me which one they should run uh, depending on their setup so i just did a couple mild passes on 4S and 6S, uh, just to get you some data logs and show you how good these cat packs really are, uh, why all the work that I put into these has turned out so well. Um, so uh, this is what's gonna show you what's gonna separate me from one of the competitors. So let me get right into it here. Um, this is actually the pack that I ran in the car yesterday. Uh, this just to give you a little idea of what I do here uh, when it comes to uh, R&D on things. Uh, I literally run these packs and then I dissect them after every single one. I've done this to dozens of packs. Um, I do this every time. Um, I pull them apart, check them, smell them, check all the caps, make sure everything's staying together, connected, make sure all my adhesives are working well, make sure nothing's burning up. I do this every time. So I'm taking all of the uh, trial and error out for you. Um, so get right into the uh, first pass, which is a 4S pass. So let me show you how fantastic this has turned out. This was a, a 4S pass. Um, if you don't understand data logs, I'll try and break it down really quick. Um, this, this definitely was an over geared for a 4S. Um, I'd planned on running 6S and my buddy had a little 4S pack. So we just threw it in there and tested it out. Uh, so this top line you see here, that's where your throttle is. So as it flattens out and goes straight across, that's full throttle, it's 100% throttle. So this is zoomed in, normally you would see all this stuff over here, warming up tires and all these different little lines all over the place. So this is just building into full throttle, and then this is where you're at full throttle here. The one that you wanna pay attention to also here is uh, ripple voltage. So this is my ripple voltage here on the bottom. The other lines here just coincide with uh, the colors down here. So it might be RPM, temperature, horsepower, blah, blah, blah. Um, so let me get right into it here. So what you want to pay attention to is the mouse. See the mouse scrolling back and forth there? That's where it's going to, wherever that's on, is going to tell you down here in the line that says mouse. So as that moves, you see that change. Um, so getting right into it, you know, up here, this is about a two second pull. I think I got out of about 90 something, 92 miles an hour, I think it was. Um, wasn't really doing it for speed run. I just wanted the logs on 4S to see. So this is about a two second pull from end to end. Um, so as you'll see here, in the beginning of the run, I'm about just getting into full throttle here. Uh, my ripple is at 0.75, which is, you know, really good for a, a 4S setup. Um, my voltage sag is down to 13.7, which is still pretty good. I'm drawing 260 amps on this one, which is a lot for 4S. Uh, you can see we're 100% throttle. Um, so let me explain why that draws so much amps on 4S. Um, so picture yourself riding a mountain bike or something with gears and you, you start the bike from a dead stop in the tallest gear that you have, like a really tall gear. Think about how much force it takes you to get that crank going from a slow speed, you know, how you're crushing down, um, how much power you're wrenching into that crank to get it moving, how much power it's sucking from you. So it's essentially the same thing. It's just pulling amperage from your, your ESC to get it moving. As you get moving faster and faster, now that cadence gets going and it gets easier to run that crank, which is exactly what happens. And you'll see how that recovers towards the end. Um, so as I scroll, get, let me get about halfway into the run here. My ripple voltage is all the way down to 0.36 volts. And as you can see, that voltage sag is starting to recover a little bit because of that. And the current uh, draw is, is uh, going back down. Still at 100% throttle. So here's where it gets interesting. Now watch that ripple voltage line at the bottom. So I'm about two thirds into the run here and look at the ripple voltage now. 0 0.01, essentially no ripple voltage at all. And if I go over a millimeter more, zero volts of ripple, zero ripple volts, which is incredible. I didn't even know that that was capable of achieving and we just did that. And you can see this is not a fluke. There's 100% power out, I'm pulling 26,000 RPM. 
in zero volts of ripple. Um, and as you can see now, my uh, voltage stack has recovered pretty well in this too. Um, so I can go all the way to the end of this run up top, all the way to the end. And I'll stay just before the end of it. And I'm still at 100% throttle, 26,000 RPM, still zero volts of ripple. That's incredible. So I would have, uh, when I first saw this, if I would have only done this one run, I would have assumed that that was uh, a fluke. There was something wrong with the data log. It didn't read or something along those lines. So we did it again. And I did it on 6S. So here's my 6S run. Same setup. This is 6S, as you can see it on there. Now let me put the mouse in. This is building into throttle. So this is building up to full throttle. This is where most of your voltage ripple is going to be. So even here, building into the throttle, I'm just over one volt of ripple, which is really good. That's probably about three per, mm, about 4%. Uh, uh, Castle says you should be below 10%. Um, but here, let me get into the run. So I'm about, this is another, this is about a two second run from end to end. It's just really zoomed in, so it looks like it's a lot longer. So let's get about, you know, a third of the way into this run. So now I'm drawing 335 amps from this ESC. My voltage ripple is at 0.78, really good. Um, 31,000 RPM, 100% throttle. So let me get a little further in, maybe, you know, halfway into this run. Come on, focus. Okay. So now my voltage ripple is all the way down to 0.37 volts, still drawing 311 amps, 34, almost 35,000 RPM, 100% power out. So let me get a tiny bit more, about two thirds into this uh, two second pull, and this is where it gets interesting again. So now I'm about two thirds in, so about maybe one and a half seconds into a two second pull. My ripple voltage is zero again. Zero. That is incredible. There is absolutely no ripple voltage in this ESC at this time. And this is, again, not a flute. You know, you could see that I'm still drawing over 300 amps. Um, my voltage sag is uh, starting to recover. 36,000 RPM, 100% throttle. And it's not a flute because this runs for the last, you know, third of this run. You can actually see it in the line down here. You can see my ripple voltage there, that purple line. We started at about one volt of ripple from the the hit and it just dropped to nothing and remained nothing across the bottom all the way across so this is towards the end of the run just under 300 amps to draw and i'm just at 0.01 volts of ripple my voltage sag is actually recovered uh, pretty well 22.5 volts still at 100 percent throttle so it, this is just incredible this uh, th this is blowing me away that i had no clue that that was even possible to uh, completely eliminate ripple voltage in the middle of uh, this was either 125 miles an hour or 127 mile an hour run short little pull um, but I'm fully confident that if I had the room and I would have stayed in it for three seconds it would have kept that zero ripple voltage all the way across the end because you could see it just uh, it's just getting better as it goes and it gets down to zero and just runs the zero across the bottom um, that's just incredible um, that shows you the amount of effort and R&D and, and all this time that I've put into these um, to eliminate the need for you to do all this R&D and try things. These are not, again, I've, I've emphasized this in other videos, these are not your typical Chinese cat packs. This is not some homemade uh, cat pack somebody selling on eBay to make a few bucks. This is something that uh, I just decided to do. Uh, I wanted to bring the audio high-end audio aspect of, of electronics into the RC game and it turned out fantastic. You know, these again are custom printed uh, gold plated circuit boards, uh, high gauge uh, ultra efficient copper wire, uh, audio spec capacitors. This is not some cheap stuff that somebody's throwing together. I put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of passion into this and this is how it turned out and I'm just super Super stoked. Uh, I can't wait to see what the six pack finished product can do. Um, considering that this four pack has outperformed my prototype, which didn't have uh, these awesome, awesome audio spec circuit boards. So, again, this is no internal wires. This is not something that I've thrown together um, just soldering up some cap 
onto a wire and wrapping it in shrink wrap and sending it out and calling it ultimate cat pack or something. I'm doing this and I'm showing it and I'm proving it. And, you know, I've gotten a lot of great feedback. I've um, got a lot of guys out there testing these for me. So there's no, you know, no reason for you to build this a car and put so much time and so much money into it and so much effort and then just throw some cheap little cat pack that you bought off of eBay or something that you threw together. Now, there's guys that are going to make cat packs and know their business and they know what they're doing. Um, some of them get really expensive. Some of them are just... Uh, stuff that people sell on eBay just to make a buck. Uh, that's not what I'm here doing. I wanted to bring uh, high quality, high pro uh, high quality product that, you know, is affordable and that people can get and that I can just put together and, um, and I'm doing it and I'm really proud and I'm really happy that this has turned out so well. And I hope you guys stay tuned. Um, if you like my videos, you can subscribe to my YouTube, um, you can check out the website. The website is at killmodrc.com. Um, these are up for order, the three packs and four packs, and hopefully in the next week or two, the six packs will be in ready to go. Um, also, stay tuned. I just did this body. Um, I've carbon fiber reinforced it on the inside, so I got a video up. I'm putting, uh, showing that, how I did that, a how-to video. So it worked out really well. I'm really super excited. It's much lighter than the fiberglass and much stiffer. So stay tuned, enjoy, and check me out, kilmartrc.com.